Assalamu alaikum. Today we're going to talk about the alternation of generations phenomenon. And this occurs in some living organisms where in their uh, life cycle there's a part where they reproduce asexually and then there's another part where they reproduce sexually. And this gives uh, some characteristics from the sexual reproduction and some other characteristics from the asexual reproduction to these living organisms. So, for example, they get the large uh, number of individuals and that's because of the asexual reproduction because it occurs this way and it happens over a very um, short period of time, so large number of individuals. And, uh, for example, from the sexual properties is that they get uh, the genetic variation, and this helps them to adapt to the different environmental conditions depending on the place that they are found in. So, we will take an example for this. Uh, the plasmodium malaria and this um, organism occurs due to the um, infection of Anopheles mosquitoes So, when the mosquito comes to suck blood from a human being, the uh, infection goes from the mosquito to the human being, and then it changes. And then, when another mosquito comes to suck blood from the, the same person, the uh, altered type of infection goes back to the mosquito and goes the cycle this way. So, we all know how that this happened right now. So, we can divide the life cycle of Plasmodium malaria into four uh, parts. The first one in the liver of the human, and then in the blood of the human, and then in the stomach of the mosquito, and finally in the salivary glands. Of the mosquito and this part is not so large so big so this occurs in the human these two parts and these two ones occur in the um, mosquito so it begins when an organism called the sporozoite which is about 15 microns length it um, migrates from the saliva of the mosquito to the blood of the patient until it reaches the liver cells so it attacks the cell and becomes um, contagious so it begins to reproduce inside the cell forming lots of tiny other organisms this time these are called merozoites and the sporozoite of course has a chromosomal number of n the merozoites n2 so when the large number of merozoites happen to occur inside the liver cell it explodes and they get out and then they begin to migrate to the red blood cells and they of course attack the red blood cells doing the same thing here so they're produced inside forming other merozoites and then the red blood cells will rapture, of course, and the mirazoids will get out. 
and these merozoids have two choices. So this reproduction occurs in two cycles, and these merozoids have the chance to go back to that step and attack other red blood cells, or to form the first um, the first gametocytes. So these are not uh, fully developed gametes, but they are the first phase. And during this um, time or this period, the um, symptoms of malaria begin to appear on the patient. So like sweat, um, anemia, weight loss, and all of that due to the breakdown of a large number of red blood cells. So the symptoms begin to occur. Then when another mosquito sucks blood from this person infected with um, the sporozoids from the beginning, the gametocytes begin to migrate into the stomach of the mosquito and they develop into gametes. So this is the male gamete with N, the female gamete with N, and this is when the sexual reproduction occurs. So all of that is asexual reproduction. This is when the sexual reproduction occurs. They fuse and they form the zygote. And here the number will be 2N. So this is the zygote. The zygote develops into the OO kinete with 2N. It's called the OO kinete because it's more like spindle shaped and easier to move. So it's the OO kinete. And it begins to move towards the salivary glands, and on the way, it transforms into the OO cyst with the 2N. The OO cyst. Then the sexual reproduction stops. So these are just the three steps that we have here that reproduce sexually. Other than that, it's all asexual. It, uh, here, the sporozoids begin to develop inside the oocyst. And of course, this is asexual reproduction. And so each sporozoite will have an N number of chromosomes. They migrate to the salivary glands and when the mosquito sucks blood from another person or if it's the same person is so unlucky the um, sporozoids will migrate to the bloodstream to the liver and the cycle goes this way the last thing that I want to say is uh, the human in this cycle is considered not considered a primary host it's a secondary host because um, Inside the human, asexual reproduction occurs, and the primary host is where the sexual reproduction occurs, so it's the mosquito. The mosquito is the primary host in this life cycle, and uh, that's it for today. I hope it was clear for you, and until the next time, and thank you for watching, and see you.